Okay, tonight for the demo, I've uh, been deciding what I was going to say, so I have to really watch what I'm going to say. Those of you who don't know, this is my wife. <laughs> I volunteered her for this demo, uh, so I hope it goes well. <laughs> you not see me again. <laughs> But this is kind of her passion. This is what she does. This is what she sells. Uh, so I'll just turn it over to her. And, but you know, the stuff that she does on the wood, the gourds, can all be done on turn pieces. And that's, that's the thing. It's pretty transferable to any object. So yeah, there's one. So I'll turn this over to you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Never used this thing before, obviously. I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> well, I printed what the word that means wood burning is, because nobody ever says it the same way twice. It's not you. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> Yeah, it is P-A-I-R-A-A-G-R-U-F-E-E, -E -E. Pyrogroupy. 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 However you say it, I end up, it's pyro, period. That works. That's it, yeah. It's uh, literally, I had to go look up, it's hard to find stuff on the internet when you just want to look for the dictionary term because I couldn't find it. Well, the art of decorating <laughs> wood or other materials with burn marks resulting from the controlled application of a heated object such as a poker. It's also known as poker work or wood burning. I know some people, they had said on the one website I looked at used a uh, soldering, soldering, iron. soldering iron, not that. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, these, are, these are enough. Uh, what I have found out on the types of wood that you use, uh, soft wood is bad because it catches on the grain and it's real hard to not, I mean if you want to do everything in dots, you can do dots real easy because if you hesitate, it burns a dot in the wood and that's how it catches. So uh, whenever I buy my pieces of, let me figure out if these were, uh, poplar, they're plywood. I tried to sand one on our belt sander. Number one, I have to, I've taken our sander apart two or three times because it goes right in and, you know, through. Yeah. And it's real easy to sand off an entire layer and you'll end up with divots of different size in here. So I hand sand them. But if you don't sand them first, this one is new and as is. That's how I got it. There's what happens when it got stuck in the, in the sander and took off. Yeah. It catches on every little bump that's there. Whenever I sanded this one, I did uh, it's a 320 grit. And it's just like, it's so much different. When you're using your tips on it, you have to go very light, and it doesn't catch on the grain like the other ones do that aren't sanded yet. And like whatever this was that Ron cut. Hard maple. Hard maple? Yeah. Some wing, slices. Wing maple. Yeah, this one's not a real good example because the middle's coming out, but it's a good sample wood. But that, I sanded down to where it was really smooth. And that makes a huge difference on working on these. Cheap wood, one guy said don't bother because I've seen people that are trying to sell some things that are on, I don't even know what it is, but the, the grain is so rough, they're not sanded at all, and they, they look horrible. And I would hate to waste that much time working on something to have it come out like that. But anyway, so yeah, then it said, I said sand it smoother. I printed all my little cards and they printed on the front and back of the wrong sides. <laughs> tips on improving wood, bur wood burning or to keep things clear is to keep your tip tips clean. I do have a cloth back sandpaper, I don't know. They had this at the knot hole. And all she called it was fabric cap sandpaper. And it's really smooth. It doesn't scratch up the tips. I've seen people take their tips on sandpaper and they're just like, there's not much there. I've, I've already broken two tips 
from thinning them too much and they put too much pressure and they'll just bend and break right off. You have to be very light and very careful with them. This works awesome. Is that sandpaper or emery cloth? It's, uh, it's sandpaper, she said, but... It seems more of an emery cloth. Yeah. 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 Pass it around to you. Yeah, pass them around if anybody wants to see them. By the but, way, the knot hole's in Pleasant Hill, if you don't know. Part of the knot hole game. Uh, but the other thing, and I like to get on Pinterest and YouTube, tea strainers. Number one, try to find them. Everybody had them growing up, but now to try to go out and buy one, I've got the little things that are a drain cover you put in your kitchen sink. That kind of works. This is the best thing ever. Whenever you go to whatever the tip is, I mean, you can, it just takes the carbon right off of it that builds up from the wood burning, the round tips, you know, it goes inside. It just cleans it right off and it doesn't damage the tips. And like you said with the, you don't have as many tips, you're supposed to find the tip that you like the best and learn everything with that tip. Because I have a majority of these because I thought, oh, that one looks really cool. Let's try that one. Well, okay. That's the one I've broken twice already. I used probably three, maybe, maybe four of these. And that's it. And I wish I really would have listened to somebody beforehand. He probably wishes I would have listened to somebody beforehand on that uh, <laughs> ordering these because I don't use the rest of them. But, like I said, you get good, get the ones that you're used to. Use, you can use it for everything. I've seen people do some amazing things with this, this little curve wheel and do entire portraits with it. I'm not that patient. But. What's the best one to start with? Well, they had suggested this is the original uh, handwriting script tip. It's just a loop of metal that goes around. This is the newer version of it. It's wider and it works better. So those those are good. Oh, I'm sorry, that was second generation. This was the original handwriting tip and I don't care for it. It skips, it's great to do dots. You're gonna do dot, you know, dot work on anything. That's awesome. And the ball, this one that's a round ball. They have a little teeny one and a big one. You can again do almost everything with this. You can do straight lines. You can, you know, it's obviously easier to do circles if you're using something that's round. And if it gets too hot, it catches and you get little divots in thin things. You have to have a very light touch. But it's cool. I like it. This is what I started with. This was a walnut hollow. Here it had a temperature control. They sell ones that are not temperature controlled and I have no reason, I, I do not understand why they would do that. Because I, depending on what you're burning and what wood or the gourds, you can go from almost completely off to full power and not having the variability of the, the temperatures would just, I think that would just ruin it. And this one's very hard for me to put a tip in and use because you're working that far away from your work. This heats up really quick. And if your hand slides down, <laughs> Which is I've hard. done that. You get burnt really bad. But it has a whole bunch of tips. What does it make gloves for? I have one. I don't care much for wearing them. <laughs> They're awesome. I took my hot pan holder and cut the fingers off. And when they, these things get hot, I got my little piece of hot pan holder on there. And as long as I don't get it too close to the end of it, it my Velcro works great. And I think you know the homemade stuff works better. It, makes, it really gets me going good whenever I can do something that I made up on my own and not have to worry about spending the money on it. Um, turn that over. Find a favorite tip and use it. That would be awesome because it could save you a lot of money. They're kind of expensive. Uh, a suggestion to work from a black and white image so you can see the detail better whenever you're working on a pattern. 
it makes sense for transferring the pattern and they said to uh, high contrast to print the picture a lot darker because you're, you're able to see the different layers when you have it sitting up here and you're working on it to be able to tell what it is. <coughs> And pattern ideas, <coughs> and if somebody was an artist and could sketch, that would be awesome because you could sketch out your designs on it, you can use your wood burning pen and just do the artwork yourself. I've seen people do that and that's awesome, I wish I could do that. I use patterns and I use a lot. Coloring pages, they're real popular now. Everybody has them. I printed these off. I have a laser printer now. You can use a laser printer, print these off. And that's the one thing that this would be very good for <coughs> is this tip right here. When you have that on this, and if you have a laser printer, print off your pattern, <coughs> put it on what you're going to use, high, high heat, as high as it will go, and you just Print down or print up? Down if you want it to come out on your wood. If the carbon paper is upside down, you mark <laughs> really Could, good pattern. Couldn't see. Thanks. Because yeah. I did that. I've done it both ways. But yeah. Gunk, I imagine it would gunk up the little foot too. Yeah. <laughs> it would stick real good. But that, I haven't gotten to do that yet. <clears throat> I've just paper, got right? it. It's just cheap copy paper. paper. Well, it have, but it has to be a laser printer. It can't yeah. be an inkjet. Inkjet, somebody, they were talking about using a, uh, like a, let's say this maybe a paint thinner. That they would put down on the object first and then they would put the laser jet. That's just too much. I like carbon paper, which once you can find it, you go out and type in carbon paper and find the good old fashioned carbon paper. It's really cheap. If you buy transfer paper, which is the same thing, you're going to get three sheets for the price of two or three of these. And, you know, this is just, this can be reused over and over and over. I just used the heck out of it. The only thing about using the little patterns that are uh, lightweight here, I used, these are, again, coloring pages, and I have this one out here. Place. Oh my god, I left that one at home. No way. If uh, okay. flat, I can take this down, I can use the carbon paper underneath it, and that is perfect transfer pattern. If you're doing this, not so much. It's very hard to take a pattern and get it to go around and fit. Like I didn't bring my bowl, that was good. Trying to get a pattern to go inside a bowl or outside is ridiculous. Uh, Welburn Board Farms sells peel and stick, stick and burn patterns. You literally peel the back off of it, you put it on your item, and it sticks to it like saran wrap almost, and you burn through it, and then you just rub it off. That would be awesome. But I found what the fan likes over here. Tissue paper. Cheap. <laughs> Easy. Thousands of sheets for you know wrapping stuff. And there's my pattern. You keep <coughs> that on and tape it down. And if there's if it's got a big curve, you know, you make little slits. You cut the pattern and it just tapes right around and that's how you get it to adhere to it. And it works awesome. And that's all really, really cheap. How did you get the pattern on the tissue paper? Oh, I forgot I had a, uh, a light table. If you take the pattern and put it, most of the time you can see through it, but I have some patterns that are really light. Now I can see through that without worrying about the light. If some of them were too light, light table, put that down there, I tape it across it. And then I tra trace across the top of it. That's my pattern. I put the carbon paper behind it. I have, but also didn't bring, uh, someone suggested newspaper. 
So I took the Pleasant Hill Times and I cut one of the things out with the classifieds and tried to, it really didn't work that well. I thought, okay, she said this has to work, but all the ink comes off on your fingers. <coughs> there was a picture. So I went to the front page, took one of the picture, perfect carbon paper. Turned that thing, you know, put the pattern there with the picture underneath it, and it just transferred that <laughs> ink right to it. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to, to do that. <coughs> but this one, I was going to show on this a similar one to this that Ron turned this and I just loved the base and I was a nervous wreck trying to wood burn on it because if I screw up one of my little pieces of wood it's not a big deal <laughs> but this worried me uh, so I take this thank you for finding the tape metal <laughs> They do sell paper too that they claim that uh, you can run through your printer and then burn right through it. Tape it on and then burn right yeah. through it. Well, that's the Wellburn Farms. Oh, they yeah. sell the blank sheets too. Oh, okay. But I'm cheap. I like to do things as cheap as possible and not waste money on it. So whenever I come up with this, I'll, I'll probably keep doing it this way because that's easier and it's cheaper. You can ask Ron, anything I can do to save money. Well, it helps with cost when she sells. Yeah. You know, I mean, that you have to, you know, you, if you're selling these items, you have to consider that. You know, because you can run up a lot of money quickly in little things that you don't realize. Yeah, you know, how much you have into it. Right, how much you have into it. Yeah. We didn't realize that until she really decided she wanted to start selling some of this stuff, and then we got to sit down and figuring out cost. Do you have some kind of a formula you use yeah. price stuff? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it depends. If I like it, <laughs> if I like it, the price is going to be higher. If I, if I know that there's something wrong with it that I don't like, that, that sucker's a buck. This I brought because it's a sample of overspraying. I use colored pencils, markers, paint, ink. I mean, tons of different things, and you can seal it, but you have to wipe. The first coat is like, pretend to spray and stop, and then come back, you know, half an hour later, and a little teeny bit more, because if you get it too wet, it runs. So yeah, it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to try to sell that. I, I now have another scrap piece of wood. Is but it, that can, keeps it. Can you put a sealer on and then put your color on? To keep it from running? I haven't tried that yet. That would probably help keep it from Bleed, soaking bleed. into the wood or bleeding through the lines. That's what I was thinking. The wood burning <coughs> does, uh, yeah, it creates like a little dam and the colors won't bleed <coughs> because you've got that wood burn part there. Right. So even some of the ones where I painted, it's like, well, why would you paint it if you're going to wood burn it? Well, if I don't paint it, I mean, if I don't wood burn it, the paint goes everywhere. And the things soak through, there's some things you just can't do with it. And that's awesome. I like to do some of it. I like to do the shading. I like the, you know, where I just try to, I'm not, I'm having some issues with shading, but I'm learning. And it makes it, it's really a cool detail, like the way it comes out. But these are, you know, this is a, that's colored pencil. That's what? Colored pencil. Oh. I have a watercolor pencils. This starts the joke, by the way. I have got, I didn't bring a third of what I had at home. I have this fetish of pencils, markers, paint pens, and uh, two of my sisters. We take turns sending pictures much of the stuff you have at home. I was going to take it. I'm, I'm telling you, this is like 1%. Literally, 1%. This is my, these are my uh, watercolor pencils. And I've got them in a case that, those are awesome. I can use my, I can use the water pen to blend them whenever I'm done, especially if I've done a good job on burning it so it doesn't bleed through. Yeah, that was going to start out being striped. I got the water on there and that stuff ran all over the place and I thought, oh, I don't like that. So I, I blended it in. Now I like the way that came out. 
and I found out that with uh, regular color pencils that are not watercolor pencils, they don't blend with water, but they'll blend with alcohol. And so I have a pen with alcohol in it. And um, I found that from using the alcohol inks. I have a blending solution. I have a bottle of alcohol. And it blended so well, and I used the pen on uh, something else I was doing. The alcohol makes the regular color pencils blend together perfectly. And you lose all of the lines. That's what these are. It just blended them through and you don't see all of the lines. And that's using the alcohol to do that. And then I heavily, heavily sprayed it. Some of the things like this, I like the really bright and shiny because it really brings it out. Other things I don't want. Well, that hasn't been sealed yet at all. And that's, a, that's color pencil paints. That's a little bit of everything. But some things I don't want. I didn't want this shiny. This was just sealed enough to protect it. And this was a gourd that, uh, I have two of these. Ron turned the base in this top piece for me and we made them into a hot air balloon, cut the gourd in half, so I made two of them. And that's the uh, <coughs> Abor Aboriginal dot type art is what I was kind of copying. If you want to, like find something that's <coughs> kind of a meditation. Sit down and do dots. <laughs> because you are heavily concentrating on what you're doing and you're going over and over the space. And it's, yeah. I had one little kid come up to me. Oh, it was at the wood show. Mm -hmm. We took these and this little boy comes up and he goes, that's so cool. How do you keep the air in it? And his slightly older brother says, the error is just in there all the time. That's why it's staying up. Not that it's <laughs> yeah. so, and these all have their price tags on them because we had them in the box for a craft show that we were doing. Now this, this is one of my gourds. If I'm not going to put a light in it, I don't cut it open and take the seeds out, which that kind of bothers me because when I got it, I wanted the seeds. I wanted to cut it open to get the seeds out. I cannot grow gourds in Pleasant Hill that are worth using because we don't have a long enough growing season and they're way too thin. You tried. <laughs> I tried many times and I figured out how much I could pay in shipping to have somebody else send me really nice thick gourds that I can work on and it's a lot cheaper than me trying to grow them. Hmm. Yeah, and that's what this, the painting, this again, I start out probably with colored pencils then I go to the alcohol, and then I go to the markers, because I can never make up my mind, and something will hit, and I'll be done with it. This one just goes on a base, and most of the ones that I do, we cut out the bottom, and I will use my Dremel for one of the tips on here. I can't do that after you burn it, I mean, after you paint it. You can't wood burn it because it stinks really bad, and I don't like to wear my own mask thing, so. I do my wood burning first, or the holes with my Dremel, and put lights inside of it, put it on a base, and it throws the light. And I've made you know, one for each one of my sisters. Everybody had to have one for their Christmas present. And uh, that came out. Show them what you're, show them what you're uh, holding with. Huh? Here. Oh. Does anybody know what this is? Seal. Without the wax, oh, that one's yeah, got the wax ring. No, oh, they're not wax, they're foam. They're not wax anymore. Yeah, they're a foam, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I was looking for a way because trying to hold something like this and wood burn, and my hand's here, and I can't get to it. I have a chunk of wood that I sanded so I, could put, I wouldn't get any more splinters. But that way I could have my pen in my hand and get up a little bit higher, but you're still, it's all over the place. So, take one of these, depending on what side you're using, size board you're using, and it'll sit on there. If I'm using something really small, which I have at home, Ron made me some pieces to put in here to hold it up. With or without that piece, however high I need it, 
you know, I can stick the bottom in it. And they sell for ridiculous prices these really cool little stands to hold your cord while you're wood burning. I guarantee it's not cheaper than this was. <laughs> Plus it's more fun. <clears throat> so this base. Oh, by the way, she's very protective of her pens, so if you touch one, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> My grandkids have their own markers. They know that these are never normally out because I don't want them touching them. Because if you find ones you like, which Ron bought me these and I didn't even ask for them. Yeah, just don't mess with my pens. <laughs> yeah. There are a few turners online who love to take colored pencils mm -hmm. and turn them into things to turn. Oh, well, so yeah. I've seen one of those. I, yeah, they couldn't touch my pencils. <laughs> if I did that, I would have to move yeah. to Australia yeah. or yeah. New Zealand where that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> That's just going to be a part of this to show how this works so easy. With this, this is pretty light, so I can tell when I go over it. You can use a colored pencil if you sharpen it sharp enough so you can see over your lines to tell where you've done because it's it's not fun whenever you get all the way done you take everything off and you've missed half of the design. Part of it. And you're always supposed to have your tape so you can pull it up and make sure that you're catching it. That's how I found out. I had my paper backwards and I traced my entire pattern on the back of the paper. But it comes out pretty, and that comes out pretty sharp. This does, carbon paper does not erase real well with an, an eraser of any type. I don't care what they said. Uh, one way that I have done the pattern, and you can erase it then, is to take a pencil, and if I had a big pencil, I could do this, but take your pattern and just graphite the back of it. That's your carbon paper. When you trace over that, well, I missed it, but you can see your pattern if you don't like it or it didn't work, you can erase it because it's pencil shading. That works awesome. That's how I did all of mine to start with. And I really like the ease of the carbon paper, but you've got to go light with it and have something to keep your hand off of the, the piece that you're working on because this smudges, and the only way to get it off then is with sandpaper. Then that too. But that's what I have. All of the things out that are trying to make it easy so it doesn't bother my hand, I don't get cramps in my hand. I made a, who's he wants it? That's a good idea. Turntable. As I said, it's always, you should keep your hand in the same position and move your piece. So I have a piece, and that's what I do with this. I, uh, let me put my clip on here. I find it. my favorite. And the hotter you burn, the more carbon builds up on it. And this is why this thing is perfect. You just fill on the outside with it. It's metal. You can do it while it's hot. I think that's the quickest I've made a mess. And I have stuff everywhere and can't find any of it. On my uh, coal wood burner, the right side, the right burner, it's a double burner. The right is a heavier wire and will take higher heat. <laughs> the left one doesn't. I left it on once and burned it out. And I've got a four because I can't put it above four 
the wire is too thin and it's not meant for the high heat and it'll, it'll end up replacing it. But these heat up really fast. I just switch sides instead of turning the power on. And you're supposed to pick the heat level that is the coolest, the least amount of heat to do what you want. If it's bright red, which I've seen demos on people doing wood burning on YouTube, and this thing is flaming red, and when they touch the wood, it is just billowing smoke. How they don't just put that right through the wood, I don't understand because it'll just it'll just burn right through. But this is going to work for right here because it's too high. A scrap piece of wood because you never know, depending on what you're using. I can use a good amount of heat on this wood, but if I put this on the gourd, it would put a hole right through it because you have to go with really low heat on the gourds. So this is, it's got my handy. It's get really hot. And that's why I have to have my hand up higher and let it goes here. This is sand, sanded so smooth that it just glides right over it. Now the patterns, you always do your outlining first and then go back with a light hand because you can add more, it's really hard to take away if you really burnt it dark. This is the, uh, the wood that was not even sanded. I'm going to try to do a circle. Go over there too. It, it just skips. You can't see. It, it's not near as smooth and it just won't do a nice consistent burn. Usually it'll just leave big old divots and I've had that many times. Because this one I this one I burned with this tip. I got my tip holder out there. I'm using it. And this was the one that had that I sanded and it made a huge difference. They're, they're a lot smoother. I can do some heavier or lighter, but if I want everything very light, it's smooth and it doesn't catch in it and do all these burned out marks. I don't, I don't like the scorched marks specifically on things. I'm doing exactly what they say not to do. You're not supposed to push away from yourself. You're supposed to pull towards you. It makes it smoother. And it does. And you tend to want to scribble. The faster you go, the lighter it is, and you don't get any burn. You have to, you have to be patient. And I'm not a real patient person. to take and do, you know, light on the inside, but I wanted the outside to be heavier and start out light. From one standpoint, they say a continuous movement, don't stop and go, but to keep from getting the little divots, they said it was like an airplane taking off or landing. You come in and be, you know, moving as you hit the wood, burn and then lift up so you're not stopping because if you stop, that's how quick you can get 
a dot in the middle of something. And then I turn that into doing the Aboriginal thing, and the whole edge becomes dots then, because I've put dots in it already. So, yeah. I'm going to get just a couple of spots. See, with this tip, I mean, you can. You can get straight lines, circles, whatever you want to do. I could do the majority of it with this one tip. And you're using the raw tip? Mm-hmm. There's a little teeny one. It doesn't do too bad. But I like the big one because you can really, you can get, you can do anything with that. This wood, being so smooth, it's much easier to do the edges and the circles, trying to do the, the hearts and all of that, and go around in a circle is really hard on the cheaper wood. I just tried to add another heart. See, I just barely touched it. I have a, I have a nice little dot in there, and that's not what I wanted. Turn it down. The difference in the woods. This one's just not, it's not sanded, it won't go smooth. What heat setting are you on? Hmm? What heat setting are you on? On the heavy side, I've got this about a three. On the gourds, I can turn it down to zero and get a burn. And the, the lady at the Nautilus told me if I needed it lighter, she can take the case off of this and there's little switches you can adjust to have it go even lighter. That's... I had one like this that I got with an estate sale. It was in a whole box of stuff. It was spinning freely, which it shouldn't. If they're damaged, roll them out, because that's how easy it was to get my hand to slide right down off of the thing and burn the doo-doo out of myself. It was really bad. That thing went in the trash pretty quick. Is that basswood there by your left hand? That one there? This that one? Bass? No, it's winged uh, maple. Oh, okay. I know they use a lot of basswood mm -hmm. too for burning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some out plaques, there. and I don't know if that's, I don't know what these are. These are the Hobby Lobby boxes. <coughs> no Probably this. pine. Probably. And they say don't use pine because the grain, it's so soft that the grain will catch, but that worked pretty good. I didn't have any real issues with it. And this was, uh, this is Jose George. It's my first and only thing that I turned on the lathe. I made Ron cut it in half because it was so big and bulky I didn't like it. And I was going to make it for a stand. We have the little glass uh, weights with like the little fish in it and the different things. And so I would burn on that. So I have, I have one, one thing that I turned and turned and burned. And that's what I've been, been building up my skills and my uh, my guts to burn on on some of the things that Ron turns because they're it's just gorgeous and I love the the detail on it. They did show. Uh, I'm into showing this before. That's the one thing nice about this. The more expensive one, they heat up fast. Mm. That one takes forever, and you have to let it completely cool down before you change tips. Otherwise, you strip it. 
And when you contact the company, they send you a little thing that you can screw in here while it's hot, and it redoes the whatever rethreads it. Rethreads. <laughs> yes, which was great because then I didn't have to worry about just throwing it out. But you have to do everything you want to do with that one tip, and then stop and go on to something else. But on these, if this is enough, my one that I got stuck in the sander. You can fill, you know, the, the leaves with dots. And I'm moving too fast, so my dots are not lined up real good, and I don't like when they get out of whack like that, so that whole leaf would end up being dots. And that's, that's a pattern thing that everybody uses. The faster, the higher you turn this up, people will do the background, this little section that's a background, and burn it on purpose. And I have a, uh, What's the dental thing at home? I have a uh, air filter that was from a dental office. And I, it has a big, huge dome thing that comes out, and it sucks all the smoke away. Yeah. Got that in an auction, too. That was awesome. Because I don't know what's in some of this wood, the gourds. And I know when I clean those and the amount of mold that is on them, I have to wear my mask when I would burn them. <laughs> That does the background, where it's kind of, you can tell it just, it's dots, but people do that for the texture, and we'll do it on the background with flowers or whatever, and then paint, and that, that gives it a deeper, whatever, more detail to it. Um, I don't know, you can kind of do it with this. Uh, to fill in spaces, They'll do almost like cross hatching. Just lightly going across and then back. It's not showing as much so light. Turn it up. <clears throat> it's better with the uh, the edged. I mean, this is like a razor, it's real fine, and you can just do the cross hatching really good with it. It's very hard with something round to do that. Ooh, very easy to get holes in it, though. Now, that's where the look at, and even as you come in, you can get the. Trying to burn too hot just doesn't work. Yeah. And like I said, I use the watercolor pencils. Um, Sharpies are awesome. Here goes the paint pens. Don't touch that first. Yeah. <laughs> There's must be you know two or three drops of ink in one of these. Because you get started on something and it's empty. And they're expensive. I love how well they work. They are awesome to work with. I think this one's like almost dead. But that's my favorite one. You want to color that in? Ooh, that one got really wet. That stayed within the burn marks. And it was, I, I hit it a little too hard and it was really wet. Normally that would just straight through the wood. But the paint pens, it dries very quick. It's, uh, some of that was the paint pen. It doesn't dry real shiny. You want it shiny, you put a coat of something on it. But it costs too much. So I found online, and my kids got me gift certificate to, to art. 
down on Southwest Boulevard. Southwest Boulevard. Artists. <coughs> Cole Snow. Yeah, nice. creative artists. I forget the name like of it now. But they sell all these empty pens. And you buy whatever color ink you want. So I started with black and white first because I didn't, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on stuff I'm not going to use. So I started out with the black and white. These are awesome. I have a couple more tips. I just I haven't taken this one off yet. But it's got the little ball in it, so it shakes up like a paint pen. And I usually get it going on paper. But this one's fairly well used. It's more like a little sponge tip now instead of a brush. But it'll. You have Ron put the name of that place on the website. Yeah, it's yeah. Artists and Craftsman Supply oh, of Kansas City. It is. Yeah. I can put it. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's like cold snow, but. <laughs> Probably cheaper, and they have more craft stuff, and Cold yeah. Snow has more professional things. So yeah, the white, and it stays within the thing because the, the wood burning made the little dam, is what I called it. And this is, I think this was on sale maybe four bucks. You know, these are two or three, four bucks a piece, and you don't get hardly anything out of them. So th those are awesome. I've, I've learned to use that. I just need to get some more pins now. <laughs> <laughs> some more empty pins to put it in. They don't have a big variety in the brushes. You know, this, if you're going to do something big and fill in the space, that's awesome. Uh, the alcohol ink is another one. And I haven't done a whole lot with that yet. That you put that in a bowl and start painting with it, the wood sucks that right in and it's dry. They have a blending solution. I've seen people do some demos on the gourds and it's just gorgeous the way it blends and covers. So that's, that's one of the things I'm going to try. Good old cheap acrylic paints and a thin brush. That works awesome. That's <coughs> quite a few of these have paint, just plain old paint on them. And that stuff that's, you know, well, I don't know, these are for somebody else's. I ended up with a whole box of it. So. Is that the one we got at the, uh, at the auction? Or now I have, uh, you know, I'm, I want to get another empty one of these. I, from an auction, we got a deal that had paint in it and stamps. I have way more stamps now than I would ever, I would never have paid full, <laughs> full price for, but in this box at this auction, I mean, the art stuff that was in there, I probably got, you know, 50 bottles of ink. Yeah, I can put these, I can either put it in a little dish and use a brush, and this is the Windsor and Newton, and it's really expensive. Ink, uh, oil paints, watercolor paints, acrylic paint, just tons and tons of options of things that you can use. Yeah, that would be expensive if you went out and bought all of the Windsor and Newton things to try or to get all the different colors, but that's how it came, and I have all of this stuff that I can try out now. Um, the markers, these are not permanent, but they're brush tips. They work really, really well, especially if it's wood burned. If not, once you get your color going and you really like it, and you find out that it's just bled all the way through the wood, and I just have a huge variety of, you know, you know the Sharpies. Yep. The little brush tips work really well for decorating tops, too, while, yeah. they're, while they're still on the um, on the lathe. Yeah. I've done a bowl that Just, way. Yeah. Whoosh, and you got a spiral, and it's dry instantly. It yeah. doesn't bleed. Yeah. That, I, he did that. Yeah, yeah I did that on a bowl. Yeah. yeah, I mean, stamps. <clears throat> Here's one that had so the stamp. Here's a stamp. Uh, I don't know, I did that for somebody's birth announcement. Works perfect. Use a light color D, stamp it. It doesn't smell. You know, I can go through all of this stuff. I have got tons. Now, that's a real fun one to do if you wanted to have trees. That's really detailed. Let me get it. Do you then burn it? Mm -hmm. Would burn the design. So it's a pattern. Yeah, it's a, that's another way to get a pattern. Uh, yeah, just tons of, of that. 
I never used that for my scrapbooking stuff as a stamp, but it's a perfect pattern because it's narrow, it's thin. I can put it, well, it won't work so well on the gourd, but I can put it on a plaque and use all the different pieces of it. So and that's the, what all the of The thing them is, these, these are for scrapbooking. And the thing about scrapbooking is people get into it, then they realize it's not what they want to do. And so you can catch the these on estate sales, on garage sales. Uh, we catch it on our local Pleasant Hill for yeah. sale page. People just sell them, and they're not they're not cheap. Yeah, some I mean, of these some are like ten bucks a piece, them. and people have them in there for thirty or forty on the box for ten bucks. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, and there's just all kinds of really cool designs. I did this one. This one came out really good. I don't think I brought it with me, but yeah, to get these and a lot of these, I found at a thrift store. They have them in a box okay. until people start buying it, and then they start checking the price up because yeah. People get tired of them and get rid of them. Right. Yeah. Well, I had a whole box I was going to give them to my daughter when I started doing the wood burning. I got them all back because <laughs> I now have another life for them. I can use them on everything. So, yeah, I've got all of that. I've done bookmarks. Those sell where the wild things are. Kids love those. And I did some Minecraft and different things. Refrigerator magnets. It's a clothespin with a magnet on the back and little pieces of wood that were in another box from the auction. Just loose little pieces. Wood burn them, stick them on, glue a button on them. You know, and but it shows all the different things, all the different finishes you can do. There's more of them. Oh, it's more of a zig for doing a background on something. That's got <coughs> little teeny lines, dots. That one was just a different pattern that I wanted to try and I put buttons on it. Showing the paint boards. Yeah. This is how I am at home. I, I can't find anything because it's all over the place. I sat down and went through my colored pencils so I could see what the colors looked like and I did a board. And then whenever I went to pick an orange and figure out what I want to go with next, I have the sample board and I can go pick out the color I want. I know what it's going to look like. Sure. Uh, now I have another one where I've taken and done, colored it with water, I mean, colored the color pencil and then used the water, and another one where I've done alcohol to show how it blends together. I don't know what it was. And then green tea, and I didn't write down which markers those were. Those are markers. That's helpful. <laughs> I like that color, but I don't know which one it was, so I, yeah, it took me a while to figure that out. I'm not the, the tidiest person, but uh, there's just so many things that you can do with it. This, these are my templates. Oh, I have a calendar. I have a color by day calendar. Those make awesome patterns. Templates, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, you can buy those at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or... Walmart. Dollar fifty at Walmart because it was time for school to start and kids decorate their lockers and I thought, well, we were never allowed to decorate our our locker with anything. I'm assuming they do this on paper and then stick them on their lockers. You know, there's tons of Did stuff. You bring the flexible one? I brought the. I bought that at the gourd show. That's awesome. Yeah, that's you want to put a circle on a gourd a or something on a bowl? Yeah. I even measured it. <laughs> I didn't know I did that, and I marked it so I can have my degrees. My degrees. A lot of these are uh, you can peel them off a couple of times. Yeah, and these are these are really good for wood turns, especially bowls and stuff, as they'll yeah. conform and stick right to the side. So yeah. if you're trying to do a design around the side of it, they'll just stick right around, and you can trace hold. right through it. Trace right through it, peel it off. When it gets too much stuff built up on it, you throw it in soapy water and wash it. So that's, Ron bought this really cool thing. It's now in my box. <laughs> I use it because I like to do the, uh, almost like the Zentangle, which is another thing. You can take, Come up with a circle, 
use this little thing and get whatever layers you want and you don't have to measure it. Who had spiral graphs when they were a kid? <laughs> right. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's about what it is. My yeah. kids did it. I didn't. <laughs> I did. So yeah, I mean that's just some of the stuff. Uh, which, by the way, this was for Mel. How to make a Zentangle. He said, you need to do a demo on Zentangle. And I said, no, you need to understand that some people get really offended if you say that you do Zentangle because you can be licensed in it. It's copyrighted. Uh, it's an abstract drawing created using repetitive patterns according to the trademark Zentangle method. Uh, they're always credited on 3.5 inch square tiles. I mean, here's the rules. Now this is what you're supposed to do to relax. Is follow the rules and do all this stuff. Yeah. And here's some of the patterns. They're fun, but I call them doodles. But people that have gotten their license in Zentangle are very offended. No rules. Huh? Sit, no, down below the, on the flat board. This one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's basically. That's yeah. basically the Zentangle, but yeah. it's on wood, it's in color. It was wood burned, it was not done with a neat pen. I mean, I broke every rule there is, but it was fun. I tried to get this to, tried to give it to Channel 4 for a giveaway for their You Matter deal, and they mm -hmm. never responded. But I like it. So, yeah. I'll wrap it up. Yep. If anybody, that's it. If anybody wants to come up and see the stuff, see what the patterns are, feel free to come up and go through it. And thank you very much. Don't know what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you.